it's Kim and Jen. Woohoo! Please... Yeah. It's a new intro. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a long day. Yeah. Uh, we're Kim and Jen, the owners <laughs> of Fleece and Harmony Wool and Mill in Belfast, Prince Edward Island. And if this is your first time joining us, welcome. Be prepared. It gets a little crazy sometimes. And today is looking like it's gonna be a little nuts too. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, we, for those that uh, are, have been following us, welcome back. You're still with us. Yeah, it's, good. it's episode 19. Hard to believe. Yay. That's almost like half a year then, right? Yeah. No, more than, more than a year. year. Yeah, really good. almost a year. Dates, okay. I'm getting closer to a year. Yeah. And this will be uh, launched on August 16th. So, uh, and there's something really exciting that we're going to tell you about, which is happens the very next day after that. So anyway, we'll see. Okay. And uh, so today we're, um, it's kind of a standard episode in some ways, but there's lots. So there's, uh, there's going to be our farm update. Um, the things that happen on this farm are a little bit mind boggling. So <laughs> yes, at the worst time possible. So we'll just tell you a little bit about that. And uh, we have FOs, and we have whips that we're gonna go through. And, and we have rips. And we had rips, <laughs> and whips, and rips again. And, <laughs> and Jennifer's gonna show us her very first scarf that she made. Yeah. And uh, we have a little interview with a very special event that, that's coming up, and it starts the day after uh, this podcast is launched. And then we just have the regular crazy stories that we normally have. We have quite a big shop update because we've gotten quite a lot of things we've been in. on a bit of like, a buying spree. Yeah, so it's a little bit of an episode of our, these are a few of our favorite <laughs> things because yeah. we really, uh, we, had, we have some really fun things to show you. And uh, we've got Ask Us Anything. We've got two questions from that. And we, um, uh, and I, that's, that's about it. Yeah, we better yeah. get started. Yeah, we it's better get be started. Super long. So first, we're supposed to talk about how we would love it if you like the video, if you would hit the thumbs up, and right. if you would subscribe to our channel. But the majority of you who are watching here probably are doing that and sending us lovely comments. Well, not yeah. the majority, but lots have. But yeah. if you haven't done those two things, we would really appreciate it if you yeah. would. Yeah. Our last video, the one where we were so hot and sweaty, we were hoping yes. nobody would watch it. Got over 5,000 views, which is so amazing. That's a new record for us, so we're super appreciative of that. Right. And we hope that keeps growing. It's really fun to see yeah. our little podcast grow. Right. And so now we want to ask you just another special favor, because we're always asking you guys to work. Um, but to help us get um, grow a little bit faster, we would love it if you would take the link to this video and share it with your Facebook friends who you yeah. think might also um, enjoy the podcast. That's just another way to help us grow so that we continue can continue to invest the time in doing it. Yeah. And so thank you for all that. Yes. Now over to the farm yes. update. 5,000 views. I it's see amazing. the word skunk again yes. and I can't hardly believe it. Yes. So just so you know, we keep our, uh, we keep our notes in front of us yeah. on the, on the tripod where the camera yeah. is and it's big letters because I don't wear my glasses when I'm doing this right. and Jennifer still needs her glasses as well, but not as much as I do. So it's big. The font is big enough that I can see it from here without right. sprinting. So if right. you've ever wondered what I'm looking at, sometimes I'm going like this. That's why. Yeah. That's so we're going to talk about that poor skunk. And the skunk story continued. So <laughs> I think we've mentioned uh, a couple times. I don't can't remember what context under what context that we uh, only have the garbage uh, pickup here on Prince Edward Island is one week it's garbage and the next week it's compost. So um, I don't think we would get on to get in got into the really gory details about the poor skunk that expired. And if you want to hear the story, you'll have to look at next last week's uh, or last uh, episode because uh, we won't go through all that. But the skunk was organic, so it went into the compost bin. However, the skunk incident happened the day after the compost bin had been picked up. Poor skunk was in the compost bin for two whole weeks. Right kind outside of, my door. Yeah, yeah. And I can tell you, it didn't really smell much like skunk, but as things deteriorated, the, the smell of skunk was pretty, pretty obvious. So, the poor guy. 
um, poor guy Ken, who <laughs> takes the compost up to the up to the thing, and that he he started worrying about it about three days before compost day because he's like those guys that have to dump that are going to be furious at us so and luckily they use it they have a machine on the truck so they don't actually they do open the thing themselves okay. but other than that but all the other compost for the last two weeks was on top of it so the skunk was the first thing to go in yeah and if you don't if you're bad and you put the wrong things in your compost or your garbage or your recycling you get a big orange sticker which is kind of like the cone of shame on a dog yeah, if you, you get, get your orange sticker list. you're on the naughty list so ken was worried I guess he had nothing else to worry about that week. So he, <laughs> he was worrying that we were going to get a, a thing on it, the, the stamp of uh, being naughty on the thing when they opened up and smelled the skunk. That didn't happen. They came and he, we, we can watch from the mill when they're coming to get the, the garbage. So he was watching all morning to see if they actually dumped it. I actually saw them dump it. I said, Ken, they dumped the compost. He's a nervous you, guy. You can stop worrying about that. Everything's fine. And there's no sticker on it. So we're fine. So he was like, oh, good. Okay. That's like, we got rid of that. So after work, Ken goes up, goes up to the road, which is quite the what? Like, I don't know, a hundred meters, 200 meters, far. maybe pretty far. Can I hear him going on his ATV with his his trailer to go get the compost thing? And he comes back and he's distraught. <laughs> That's a word to describe it. Because everything else went out of the compost, but the skunk was still in the bottom of the compost. Stuck. Stuck. It got stuck there. So that meant that Ken actually had to practically climb into the compost bin <laughs> and get the stunk out so, out. so I'm sure the guys that pick up the compost have no idea any of this happened because it just went on the arm of the machine. It went in and they put the thing down and that was it. So they had no idea that the skunk was still there. Ken actually had to take the skunk in the compost bin up to the wood lot. And I don't know, in order to reach it, he would have practically had to climb into the thing and clean the compost. It's really, it's so unfair how he gets all the glamorous jobs around here. <laughs> yes. Poor Ken. He's really, he really, we wouldn't have done it. I think we would have just thrown out the compost. <laughs> yeah. We lost ours. We don't know what happened to it. Yeah, we need a new one. A yeah. car hit it. That sometimes has happened. So yeah. we have gotten... Did you have a truck run over yeah. one time. Anyway, so poor Ken... I, I would say the joke's on him, but it really wasn't funny because it wasn't his fault that the fox ate the skunk or killed the skunk, but he he really... He, it was a nasty business. It was a nasty business. Yes. However, the skunk got a proper burial now, yes. so I'm sure everybody feels more comfortable yes. about that. Yeah. And then you had an adventure on the farm. Dignified. It wasn't yeah. a story about Ken. No. What it, was I even doing down there? Getting the oh, horses Oh, I know. Down. So the farrier came... Mm -hmm. And we did the three horses and I, she works a regular job and it was the end of her, well, not even the end. She had another place to go to. So sort of the end of getting to be a long day for our farrier April as well. Yeah. Down there, horses are sort of okay behavior wise, but it is doing three in a row and they're a little bit fidgety and there were yeah. bugs and one of them's really sassy and we got through mm -hmm. all that. So that was all good. Happy, happy, happy. And she drives her car right down to the field. So I yeah. start walking up the field and there's a lamb out loose in the middle of the aisle. Yeah. Which is not unusual for some reason. As you know, this group yeah. of lambs has taught each other to yeah. go underneath the bottom wire of the fence, right. which isn't electrified. And they all seem to just do it at will. Yeah. And they're spreading that information through the flock. <laughs> and so it was this little guy and I'm like, you little devil. Yeah. So I think... I could just open this gate for a second and shoo him in because he was waiting right there to go back in. He was, mm -hmm. could clearly see the sheep. He was in the wrong spot and they were right there. So I opened the gate and I turned <laughs> back and I was like, shoo, shoo, shoo. Well, the entire flock of sheep came running <laughs> and I'm trying to figure out what to do. I tried to shut the gate again. They went right through it. Yeah. They plowed it over. Some of them yeah. were getting caught out of it. All the poles came out of the ground. They yeah. just stampeded because it's kind of like, it was like the day before grocery day. So yeah. right before we are going to move them, they have to work a little to get food. Yeah. Like, you know, they're going to have to scavenge a little. Just we to want them to eat the stuff that they don't necessarily yeah. like as much as their yeah. favorite Which vegetation. is totally edible, but they're like, well, if it's 
not a dandelion green. I'd rather just go to another field. Yes. <laughs> well, that's not allowed. You right. have to stay and eat all the stuff that you can eat. Yes. Well, they they seriously object to that principle. Yeah. So literally 180 sheep <laughs> went through over this gate. All right. Dragged it part of the way with them, and that was it. They were out. Yeah. And it was 15 minutes before knit night was starting. Yes. So I was ready to send out a message and tell everybody coming to knit night just to meet us down in the field. Yeah. But what we ended up doing was just fencing them where they were. Yeah. We had these wonderful flexible fences and we literally just were like, all right, well, they were in the hedgerow. They're happy yeah. eating here. There is grass in between the trees or whatever. Yeah. Just put up a couple uh, electro nets. They're called yeah. electrify the sucker and let's get on to yeah. knit night. And they were, they were in a safe spot. So yeah. it was, it's Fortunately, they went to the fields. right instead of to the left or they yes. would have been headed up towards the house. Yeah. yeah. So they, uh, they, we graze them there sometimes anyway, just to clean it up. And yeah. so they're used to eating in there, but it was kind of an unplanned thing. And they really were all out. Yes, every last one. Yeah, every last like one. A big was out. crowd. Yeah, and they had a lot of power. Like they yeah. stampeded me like a herd of buffalo. <laughs> so this whole prey animal thing, I, and I was like yelling, of course, like ah, and like yeah. trying to put the, the barrier down, and, try, to, and then the farrier was like trying to help. She had to stay for like an she extra had her half coat, an hour. She had her coat. Woo, woo, <laughs> like, woo. <trying> to stay <laughs> out. All the horse people are like, I don't know the sheep noises. Yeah, and we're like, it's like. <laughs> You know, because with horses, you're always like, yeah. they don't need much. But sheep, you got to be a little bit louder and more aggressive to get yeah. them to move, especially our sheep, because they're all a bunch of spoiled brats. Yes. I couldn't believe it. Anyway, yeah. I ate a lot of cake at midnight after that. Yeah. That's obviously, of course. Why. That's soothing, soft medicated <laughs> on cake. I was like, Rachel, get in here. And, was, and wasn't it fantastic? No time to eat. It was delicious. It was like a caramel almond thing. Yeah. Uh, so good. Well, I put up a picture on our Instagram stories with the zucchini that people brought. <laughs> yeah. That's really low, bringing a zucchini to at night and yeah. getting someone taken home. <laughs> anyway, I'm sure you all know that you have to lock your doors at zucchini season so yes. that you don't get zucchini to drive by zucchini. Yeah, in your front seat. Our knit night Leave, people zucchini. need you zucchini. Although Rachel did seem genuinely grateful for the zucchini. So she said it was, it was the nicest gift anybody had thought they were. <laughs> <laughs> but what she doesn't know, and she'll hear it here first, is that... When Karen brought the zucchini, and I said, oh, I know. I said, who's the zucchini for? Not for us. <laughs> it's for Rachel. And I said, uh-huh. I knew right away what she was up to. I said, so you're hoping for a zucchini cake next knit night? She goes, is it going to be obvious? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be obvious. It's obvious. I said, it's obvious. Yeah. That's fine. Why Why else would you... We should yeah, try to get some vegetables in. Yeah, why would you gift a zucchini, a giant zucchini, to the baker of the group <laughs> if it wasn't for zucchini bread or a chocolate zucchini cake? We'll take either. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. So there'll happens. be a part two to that story. Yeah. So, yeah. um, yeah. So it sounds like our sheep get out all the time, which they really don't. I've actually never had that happen where yeah. they just stampeded... Yeah, me like yeah. they 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 went like a herd of buffalo. I'm not kidding. It, it was... might be because we've been moving these ones around more often, so they're yeah. pretty used to. They know when the gate opens, they kind of all it's gather new food. and it's yeah. new food. So I think yeah, they kind ran. Of... Yeah. And April was about to start driving up the aisle to leave, and she goes, "This wasn't on purpose, right?" <laughs> No. No. <laughs> no. Sheep surrounding your car is never on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so that yeah, was so that's it. That and there's yeah, the kind of the only adventure of yeah. that nature for this week. Yeah. And the this only year. thing about rain, it sounds like we're never happy, but there are the only thing about the weather, there's been no rain. Yeah. There was a big Lots thunderstorm. Of thunder and lightning. Yeah, a big thunder actually. and lightning storm. I think they said it was not even half an inch of rain fell and then that's been it. So that's everything's awesome. dried out. So, oh well, yeah. We're getting used to it now. Yeah. It's just now we're nothing just... grows in August. It's nope. fine. So call the hay guy. Now we're, <laughs> now we're, we're feeding, feeding hay. hay in the summertime. Yeah, that is not is what really, you want. Yeah, because anyway. we and we do that because we want to take the pressure off the pastures before they're completely ruined yeah. when it gets like this. So before now we, go we just do so. it every year. Yeah. So now that's just the way it is. Yeah. So it's not. It's not. I. We're. We've just given up. It's, that's. That's. Yeah. It. That's what's going to happen. All so, right. without further ado, we are going to do talk about our, our finished objects. And those. And Jennifer has done one f that will take up a space where because I don't have an FO. I have two. Yeah, and Jennifer's In got two. In fact, you're probably like, what on earth is she wearing? I don't even recognize that. Well, you haven't missed anything. I finished two sweaters yeah. in two weeks. Yeah. 
two ranunculi. So, yes, I wrote ranunculosis, but right. then I understood it's probably ranunculi. Yeah. When you've got more than one. So, <laughs> ranunculi number one yeah. was the gray. And so, and I love it. I yeah. love them both for different reasons. So I did the long sleeve version. I didn't do the, the convoluted cast on because mm -hmm. convoluted cast ons drive me crazy, even mm -hmm. though I understand they, they serve a purpose. And then I couldn't figure out like why, this was supposed to be the wide neck version, it's awfully tight. Clearly there was something substantial different, substantially different about the cast on you were supposed to do. But you know, I had two balls of yarn, so I just knit until I was happy with the length, even though you already know, because I told you last time, I took the band out and re-knit it longer and right. whatever. Anyway, it's absolutely perfect now. I love it dearly. I wore it all day yesterday. It was so comfortable, soft and yeah. squishy. And it's just like a perfect weight because it was like 23, 26 degrees yesterday. Yeah. I was perfectly comfortable yeah. driving in the car and, and yeah. going to do what we did, our yeah. interview that you'll see later. So this was number one. So then I kind of thought, well, I, I feel irresponsible because it was the whole thing. Is it really, can you really do this sweater for under 500 yards? But obviously I didn't even attempt it with this. Right. I had gone down a needle size. There's all kinds of reasons why this took a ball and a half of Eldon Lace instead mm -hmm. of one. So then I thought, if it's really one ball, I can do another one before we record again. I'm doing it. <laughs> and then I thought I wanted, I could not decide which color I wanted to do before. So now I'll do the other color. So right. I have both. And so I did the 460 yard version, which is this. It's the cute little short cap sleeve. And then I just... I, I could get really crazy with the beading. Yeah. Like I could really That's go. That's not crazy though. No, That's I nice. could go a little bit nuts, but this seemed like a really good opportunity to put yeah. these lovely magenta um, bicones on here. And I'm going to talk a little bit about how I did that later because it is a bit of a, it's not a thick yarn, it's a lace weight yarn. But um, anyway, I just. It's beautiful. I love this. And that neckline is lovely. Yeah. And so look at this cast on though. Yeah. Oh, and I had to get Kim to do it. I still didn't do it. It was like this. I'm like, I left-handed one hand macrame. No, <laughs> just to get started. No, I, but, but I can't do the long tail cat. Like I just, I don't, I don't like those ones. And this one did make a big difference. I may not have made a big difference, yeah. but, but it was difficult. Yeah. Took me, a, I had looked at the video a few times. 10. Well, I at had least. to get, look at each step. Over again, it was like yeah. a full what forty five seconds. The video that she that we we found on it. So anyway, but it it is even it's I was surprised. Super stretchy. Yeah, it's even. It's, yes. Yeah. What yeah. is it? The double loop cast on. Yeah. Is that what it's yeah. called? Yeah. yeah. So anyway, this is amethyst brooch. Of course, I I I love it. You know, yeah. I knitted in four days, and that was with what did I do with this one? You. You no, had it. No, no, I had to rip out the raglan okay. increases That's... because I did the stupidest thing ever. I only did them on one side of the marker. <laughs> Never. Like, I don't know what. Anyway, rip that out and redid it. And then I don't think I made a mistake after that. So I don't know. I kind of love it. I'm not sure. But I have yarn left, so I feel like maybe I'll just add a little bit to it. I don't know. Uh, I actually haven't seen it on you, and we were running around getting ready for this, so I'll look at it and see. It seems anyway, like it's perfect. It's perfect, yeah. It's really nice. Yeah. I think I need to make that. So anyway, my whole point in doing this was to make sure, 100%, that you can do it with one ball of our Because I kind of me messed up last podcast when I was talking about birds of a feather. Yeah. By saying, and everybody that ordered the cashmere... Um, blend got a personal note from me because I am doing it with two balls of or two skeins of yarn but it actually calls for for you would need three yeah and I'm adapting the pattern so and I failed to mention that during the podcast so um uh that's why everybody gotta gotta know but that's all okay. sorted out now. yeah so yeah. it's it's to be fair you can absolutely yes yeah, you totally can and I have I, probably this much left like yeah. I can go and make it longer and I already added an extra two centimeters here. So it yeah. said 10 and I did 12. Right. Just because I have kind of a longer torso and I just wanted to be sure. And I wanted to use the whole thing, but I gauged incorrectly. So I could have even kept knitting a bit longer. Right. And what I really like about it is I talked about that black sweater that I have that has the sequence on it. And this is exactly the fabric that that sweater is made out of, which is what I was looking yeah. for something with. To do yeah. that, so I think I'll do it, but I won't do a crop. I'll do I really it. hope my yeah. rubies are sparkling. Yeah, but I mean, I love Swarovskis. Yeah, see, but you got to be careful. You know, you can't go too crazy. So I just put you them didn't in the want power. to bejewel it. No, no bejeweling. <laughs> 
I can't stop looking at your hair. Who are you channeling? I have naturally something here. Crazy. I wouldn't call it curly right now. It was curly yesterday. Yeah. Okay. And we'll so talk about I, it later. I, I, it's David Lee Roth. That's yeah. Who I, I typically seems look it like. was. Oh, I and I thought it was actually you. That was Peter Frampton, but that was me. That was you. I had my hair last done week. Today. You were Peter I just, Frampton. I just came back from the today. I'm David Lee Roth. It's yeah. fine. Yeah. I have a lot of hair. Actually, you know what? This is only half my hair. Yeah. I think I mentioned before my scalp back here is actually all shaved. Yeah. I have so much hair. Right. But anyway, I just thought. We're talking about natural crimp <laughs> later on, so I just thought I'd leave mine, but maybe yeah. I'll probably never do that again. Okay. Anyway, so now whips. Yeah, so you have a whip, but I, I, whip. I put my whips on top of your okay, whip. Okay, so, so you go for your I'm going to go first. Our so table I, is piled up like this. Yeah. So I am going to show, I, I know that I said I probably could finish this, and, you, everybody, and everybody, everybody believed her. Yeah, so I didn't finish it. Um, so this is Birds of a Feather, but I have to say, I just love this project and this, it's like you're knitting with air. Hmm. It's really, it's fun to do. And now I've got, uh, no more, no more, um, fur bikini. Like we talked about, I can always never get this right. So it's actually starting to take shape and I totally get why they call it, she, Andrea Maori called it Birds of a Feather. And this is just like a feather and fan. Okay. adaptation and look what it's doing yeah hmm. it's really uh and i was i was a little dubious i have to say about this whole thick and thin like with the mohair and right. everything and it would the mohair stand up to the to the yarn the wool wool mm -hmm. blend yarn but it's totally works yeah it's gonna be really nice yes and it is so nice mm. i'm loving it yeah and a few other people obviously are making it who bought the yeah yeah I, I just love it. And the way that I'm adapting, because I didn't dare take more than the short skein and another skein of the, of no. the cashmere blend, because that really wouldn't be fair. But the way I'm adapting it is the, um, you have these quite wide garter, um, garter sections. So I'm shortening the garter section on, that uses the, the petals yarn, and I'm making the mohair section longer. I wasn't sure I was going to be able to do that because I wasn't sure how stable it would be, but it totally works. Mm -hmm. So, and it'll be, even be lighter in area. Yeah, so, silk is very strong. Yeah, so um, I just need to be careful looking at how much yarn I have left when I do that just to make sure that I've got enough, uh, enough to get me to the end. But um, I did, I think I did four rows more of the mohair that meant four rows less and I'm going by the stitch count at the end of each section. So as long as I have the right stitch count, it doesn't really matter if I have extra mohair rows or mm -hmm. what is it work. It's a very easy fix. Mm -hmm. So I'm just, uh, and I have to say, I got a little cocky. I took this with me cause I went to, I went to have my hair done today and I got a little cocky because, uh, I'm finding it very easy now to read my, knitting with the mohair at first I couldn't even see it I was like I can't I can't believe that I'm I'm knitting with this but it I'm getting pretty good at it I thought that I could even knit it with, without my glasses on while I was waiting for my my hair color to be done but it really didn't I figured figured out very quickly that thinking you can see and actually inserting your needles into mm. these little tiny strands of silk is aging is depressing yes it is Oh, wow. So, yes. And my conversation, we go to the same hairdresser. Mm -hmm. My Your conversation is always about shaving your head to get rid of your hair. My conversation this time was about the fact that I'm starting to get thinner on the top. Oh. On top. Well, I don't want to get cocky. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm not complaining, but it's a lot to contend with. <laughs> and, uh, and our stylist, Lynn, agrees. Yes. She's like, let's just lose some of that. But, you know, it's still back here if I need it. Yeah. Yeah. But that won't help up here, which is where you thin. Well, it's right around here. She says it's very common. That doesn't as, help. As you know, <laughs> as you know I've had a common. birthday no in the last couple, couple weeks. But she said, oh, don't worry. She said, we can we can do stuff to fix it. But then she said, but you're it's still thick at the back. Yeah, so she had to thick even it out. Here. Yeah. 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 That's because that's where the fringe stays. Like even men have it back yeah. here. Yeah. So you need um, to take that and put it up. Yeah. Well, if the skin gets any baggier, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I'm really, anyway, I, okay. I'm really cool with aging. I'm not, I'm not uptight about it, but this was a little bit disconcerting because I've always had, my hair has never been thick. 
as far as the actual hair itself, but I always had quite a lot of it. And um, it, I can see the difference. Okay, but. well, let's not, let's not lower the mood of our podcast. No, no, no. It's <laughs> terrible. Continue okay. I'm, fine. I'm fine with okay. it. And I trust Lynn to, okay. to help fix it. Okay. So that's Thank good. you, Lynn, for keeping us looking sort of normal when we're not looking like... 80s and 70s rock stars. Yeah, yeah. She would be. I think the devastated if she could see my hair right now. Uh, the woman, uh, the woman that was sitting next to me, um, the way I came in because I was like I worked all day and then I went rushed to to town. You guys know? <laughs> Charlottetown, <laughs> Charlottetown, um, city. Yeah, <laughs> I rushed to town. And I came in there and I had my clothes on that I worked in the mill and whatever. And the woman, the woman that was sitting next to me. I, I've always thought I'm either just coming from the barn or I'm just like, I don't get glammed up to go to the the stylist. So I go there and then she does such a great job. I, I can almost see them thinking like, oh, she cleans up. Hmm. She cleans up well. Sure. Anyway. All right. All right. So, and uh, I, I didn't show Joe Bat's arm and we got some comments about the fact that people <laughs> wanted to know what was happening at Joe, with Joe Bat. So no, I just leave. Yeah, no, it's the body. <laughs> but I'm just going to show, um, I'm really past the point now. So um, if, if, you, if you've been following along, you know that I was a little bit worried about the bust measurement with the size that I chose to do. So my fix for that was to just increase the needle size. Such a good plan. In Trick a band. always, yeah. Yeah, and uh, so I went up half a size. I'm through that part now and I'm doing the waist shaping and it seems to have worked perfectly. Yeah, I so, think I might do a little of that with my pro upcoming whip that I'm gonna show too. Yeah, and it's not, it's not noticeable and the stitch count is all the same. I mm -hmm. didn't have to mess around with these cables and mm -hmm. lace and um, I think it's a good, it's going to mm -hmm. be a good fix. And this seems to be shaping up to be the right, mm -hmm. like just it's the right. It's going to be amazing, yeah. right? Yeah. It's kind of like so. in sheep health, it's always the first thing you need to think of. And you do need to train your brain to think this way is check their temperature. In sweater modification, the first thing you should think of is, can I fix it with needle size? Yeah. It's really, it's amazing to do yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. It's totally available like it's yes. just it's a, people are like blah, 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 blah. Yeah. count this and measure that well what about if you just went up half a millimeter yeah. would that fix it people think it's it back be down. noticeable but no, it's, not. it's not when it's in the garment okay. anyway it's uh it's um that so that's it joe bat and we're we found pictures of the real joe bat's arm so we'll show that when I, we do the big reveal of my sweater when it's done it might be christmas I'll try to, I, I really like knitting on this too, but this, this birds of a feather is like, uh, it's like candy. Hmm. You want to eat that before you eat the vegetables. No. Yeah. Oh, even though this is driving this vegetable. No, it's, okay, that can't be good. Well, I eat salad every night. At least night. it wasn't Brussels sprouts. Okay. No. <laughs> Which I love. Cheese sauce or bacon fat. Yes. Okay. Anyway. All right. Getting off So track. that's enough. Okay. That's that. Okay. So my whip. Ha ha. Super excited. So of course this is the second time I've knit this part already. <laughs> Whip and rip. Uh, this is a Hava by Jennifer Wood Woodhouse Knits, right. and uh, she was a guest on Fruity Knitting last, last episode. episode. She's amazing. Their episode. They have another one coming out Tuesday. The weeks go by so fast. Yeah. Anyway, uh, she does amazing cable stuff. And uh, I've just barely got started. I'm doing it in the same color. And Jennifer Wood, the designer, had done it in a deep purple and it just looked too perfect. But what's great about this is it has the exact same heart um, seed stitch cable pattern that my perhaps love hat has on okay. it. So I might knit myself a little purple perhaps love to go with it. Yeah. And it's so cute. And I love that heart cable. And there's not too much of it in the sweater because you could get carried away with that. But mm. there's, uh, it's just on the yoke. And then there's smaller ones going down the sleeves. And then there's a cute little one here, almost like a little pocket accent. Oh, okay. And then a really cute one in the in the mid back. Yeah. So I'm super excited. This is definitely the most difficult part, getting through this yoke. You can see all the markers for the different cable sections. She's got gorgeous necklines on her patterns. Yeah, right? she's just, her elegant, elegant, elegant design. And yeah. we had, didn't know anything about yeah. her until we saw her on Fruity Knitting. And uh, she does a lot of uh, heavier weight. Yeah. Designs if you're not into knitting with lace and what yeah. have you. And uh, they, this is the worsted, right? This, I'm doing worsted? this in Selkirk worsted. Yeah. Yep, which I did have to go down a needle size to get. Uh, so I'm doing it on a four millimeter. I did the five millimeter. It was very loose, but I'm a loose knitter anyway. So I would have expected to have to go down half a millimeter because that's just me. Mm -hmm. um, but when I did that, I couldn't hit the schematic with the oh, neckline. Okay. And it's already a wide ballet 
tall right. kind of neck. And so if I made it any wider, it would be down over my collarbone and that would be the, the sweater would be off and then it wouldn't be so elegant after all. <laughs> you might um, have a wardrobe malfunction, yes. a sweater malfunction. So I redid it, but I'm really, really excited yeah. um, to do this sweet little pattern. And uh, it matches my hat design. Yeah, perfect. How I'll be like a little snow bunny out there with my matching hat. And yeah. It's a three quarter length sleeve sweater. That might not make mm -hmm. sense weather wise, but no. anyway. But, and I have to say that our yarn works particularly well in cables. Yeah, I mean, I'm using the same yarn you're using for your Joe bag, right. so I have no worry you'll be right. able to see the hearts. Right. Somebody asked a question, it comes up in uh, Ask Us Anything about plies. So a two-ply yarn is not necessarily the very best yarn for cables. It, but a three-ply is, is, but this this... To it's our yarn is just so bouncy that yeah. it, it really works. So if you, which is great because if you want something lighter, you still get that great cable effect. So yeah, uh, more bounce to the ounce. Yes. And uh, just so you know, I will be starting to alternate. Yes. I always alternate, but I'm not going to alternate the yoke because I think it will be you. You won't be able to tell too much because right. it's moss stitch or seed stitch oh, okay. in between or reverse stockinette or yeah, something. Yeah, because that's then, very unlike you. Like you alternate all the way. Yeah, through. but I don't I think I can yeah. add that into into 18 different cable no. sections. I just I'm going to do the yoke. Yeah. I'll do a couple rolls with this and then I'll introduce the second ball yeah. just to make sure. And of course they were done in the same dye lot, but you can never be too careful. Right. So I prefer to just. Play it safe and always alternate. So I will be doing that. Mm -hmm. All right. So oh. the first scarf, because Jennifer was really, for, at first you were offended, but then you were complimented. Yeah, well, I wouldn't say I was offended. I was a little shocked, but somebody came in. <laughs> somebody came into the shop and they looked at my Barishois, lovely woman. Yeah. And I was explaining that this is the Elden Lace, our Elden Lace yarn. Yeah. And she said to me, oh, yeah, okay, but that's obviously machine knit. <laughs> and I was like, excuse me? I knit this with my bare hands with a 2.25 millimeter needle. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, yeah, it's just very nice and even and machine-like, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so then I took it as a compliment, but yeah. yeah. So, and so we've had, we've sold a lot of these kits and it's wonderful. Yeah. And if you've ordered one, they are taking about 10 days for us to get out now. That's yeah. just the way it is. We sold through the first batch and we're, we didn't want to disappoint anyone. So we're making these kits up as fast as we possibly can. Yeah. So it'll be worth the wait because to get all this and it's a beautiful project. So that was all well and good. But a couple of people have written and said, yeah, but you're a really good knitter. And I don't know if I can handle that. I say. Yeah. So even as good as I am knitting like a machine, <laughs> uh, this is a scarf I did when we first got the shop. We opened three years ago. Yeah. So three short years ago. I don't even know where to begin pointing out what went wrong with this. And my mother actually ended up finishing it for me. And this must be her section here. Yeah. But my favorite part is where I just started at like this, like this <laughs> where I just started adding a yarn over every time I switched to pearl. Not on purpose. No, there's yeah. like a whole, this I love. Yeah. Oh, it's like a little corner. <laughs> it's like in an eyelash. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's a nose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I was trying to do was knit garter. Oh yeah. That's what I was trying to do. Yeah. And then the occasional band of stockinette. And this is what I knit like. Three years when ago. When we first opened the shop. Three and a half years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So, and we may have even had the shop for a few months when I started. So I just... My point being, yes, because you know, this is actually this is actually knit out of one of the first yarns we made, I think. Yeah, and like, what is this? What is that? Anyway, I <laughs> so I, you know, you can improve a lot, yeah. and I think honestly, the most important ingredient, because Lord knows we rip plenty and make all the stupid mistakes. Yeah. I mean, some of them. I mean, I knit an entire sleeve of that gray ranunculus in the wrong needle size and had yeah. to redo it. Yes. Seriously, how? Yeah. Yeah. Did I mention that? Had I even done that last time? Probably not. No. Stupidest thing ever. I do it yeah. all the time. Anyway, you can improve. I, the most important ingredient is courage. Right. That's true. Yeah. Just do it. I mean, yeah. let's be honest. You can read the pattern. Right. You absolutely can. You may read it incorrectly several times yes. or do all I kinds of other silly I things. I like words of a feather, actually. But, I ripped back and but, I didn't have but to rip But look back. at this nightmare. Yeah. And that was just me doing garter. So yes, I've improved a lot. Right. 
Um, but I still make some of the same mistakes. I just know how to fix them now. Yes. And, uh, and I, I don't think show we've them. talked about that before that knowing, just understand that you can fix, there are no yeah. mistakes that are. And we really do know. credit Andrea from Fruity Knitting for giving us the courage to try some, I think both of us, to yeah. try some of these types of things and learn to modify right. knitting and cut knitting and. Um, sh she does a lot of technical coverage in, her, yeah. in, or in they do in their podcast, Andrew and Andrea. And it's been very helpful just learning, like not all is not lost. Right. You just go back through and if anything, we should give you confidence that things can be ripped out and redone because we do it all yeah. the time. And in fact, um, I was helping one of the, the Karen at knit night, um, two weeks ago that she, there was a sweater and I'm actually... Not sure if the sweater was machine knit and bought, like a kind yeah, of like a hand yes, knitting that's place. That's what it was. That's what yeah. it was. And um, she was ripping it out because I don't know who it is, whose sweater it was, but they didn't like the neckline. So she's well, I'll just knit you a new one out of it because they love the love the yarn, right? But they didn't like the neck neckline. Just ripped out the whole so thing. So she just took for a the lark. Yeah, she took the seams out of a sweater that was bought at a at a sweater shop, and. Um, Unraveled the whole thing, and we I was helping her ball it up because I had to rip my own thing out, and I did, well, didn't have the stomach for it then, so I helped her with that. And she's going to rinse the skeins out, ball it up, and make... I would expect we'll see a sweater. Yeah. That's, Upcoming at night. Wool is... You can't... It, you can't you can re reuse it redo it yeah do, yeah it's amazing right. so yeah. and it's so satisfying when you finally get to the end of it or you're able to repurpose something right right so we talked a little bit about courage now and there's a lot of uh chat about courage in our upcoming interview right so do you want to introduce fully introduce that yeah sure so the big event that's happening starting on august 17th and it runs for eight days in a place called Tatamagush in Nova Scotia, which is not that far away from us, is um, it's Woolstock. And it is the, um, the, the brainchild of Faith Drennan, who owns Sisterhood Fibers in Tatamagush. So we will, that is the real name of the place. So I love that. What's the hashtag? Tata Woolstock. Tata Woolstock. Tata Woolstock. Yeah. I apparently those in the know just call it Tata. Yes, exactly. I only found that out yesterday. Yes. So anyway, <laughs> we're gonna meet uh, Faith. So without yeah. further ado, we'll go to the yeah. go to the interview. And she's an absolute joyful person. Yes. And she's wonderful. Back to the hair. It's funny because I have curly hair in the thing, and she yes. talks about like it's kind of like if you had curly hair, why would you ever straighten it? And I was like. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> because. Yeah. Anyway, over to Faith and our yes, interview with her yesterday in her shop in Tatamagush. Again, which was supposed to be a 10 minute thing, but it was it's half just, an hour. Yeah. So uh, I'm sure you're going to find it. Her place is beautiful. So you'll yeah. see, you'll see all that. So. Yeah. Hi there, it's Kim and Jen from Fleece and Harmony, and we're on the road today. Yeah, we're like the roving reporters now. Yeah, so <laughs> we had to take this opportunity to come to Tatamagush, Nova Scotia, and you guys can look it up if you haven't heard of it before. And we're here to talk with Faith Drennan, who is the owner of Sisterhood Fibers, and you've got a pretty special weekend coming up this weekend. We do. It's actually eight days. Yes. Eight yes, days. Yeah. It's yes. quite an undertaking. Yes. And we're going to tell you all about that, or Faith's going to tell us all about it. But first, we'll start with the typical uh, story. How did you get here? How did I get yeah. here? <laughs> um, uh, well, uh, I started, my grandma taught me to knit when I was five, mm. which was quite a while ago. <laughs> and, um, uh, and I just, I've al always loved always loved making things. So, you know, as a teenager, I made my own clothes and loved to make things. But you know, as life does, you get off on a tangent. I worked in the corporate world for many years. Sounds familiar. Yeah, yes. okay, what industry were you in? I was in the marketing, magazine oh, okay. marketing. Oh, wow, So Neat. I know, owned a marketing agency for oh, okay. 25 years. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I always, always said, you know, someday, someday I'm gonna follow my passion, my heart, and I'm going to work in the fiber industry someday. Lovely. And as my youngest got closer to graduating from high school, I thought, 
this is this is it. It's getting so, close. So this is my someday. Oh, this is my someday. It arrived. Yeah, someday. Gosh, arrived. I hope there are other people watching who you know have similar plans and just see this and are like, yeah. God doing it. You can yeah. do it. That's it. You can do it. Yeah. You can take over you can your totally husband's garage. Do it. Yes. <laughs> Just <laughs> dream open it. a shop and do it. Yeah, I think that's worth saying that we're uh, in the this, garage. This is uh, was a man cave that's now been turned into a sisterhood. So, <laughs> yes, yeah. that's true. I never quite thought of it that way. But it yes. usually goes the other way. It's, it's the sisterhood. Sheep's, it's the sheep's lair. Yeah. <laughs> the sisterhood nation took over. Yeah. The whole lair. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So just tell us a little bit about your business because it's not just one thing it's not just a yarn shop it's not just a weaving place no. for weaving or spinning you do everything yeah and it's it's really not a yarn shop Tadamagush has a yeah. beautiful yarn shop Tadamagush Yarn and Company and we have Lismore Sheep Farm just down yeah, the road right. um so and we all work very collaboratively so the sisterhood is about this like the sisterhood so it's about having fun being creative so we do a lot of workshops we do a lot of festivals and we, uh, I'm an Ashford dealer, so, so I sell spinning wheels and looms and all those supplies. Uh, so yeah, so we have a, a shop upstairs, we do a lot of pop-up shops, and where, where we are right now, we do a lot of workshops here, and we do them all year round. Mm -hmm. We do spinning, weaving, felting, uh, nuno felting, needle felting, dye workshops. So anything really to do with fiber? Anything to do with fiber. And we do do the occasional knit and crochet, but, right. but um, we try to go, like I'm working, um, actually she lives in Prince Edward Island, a lady who uh, weaves and spins with eelgrass. Oh, so I'm always looking for we don't even like know different her. things. Yeah, well, oh, I'll introduce you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we're and welcome to the sisterhood. And, yes, uh, that's right. We're in your your workshop space right now, and it's delightful. And unfortunately, we couldn't record where we wanted to record quite, except because of window light and things. But uh, this the coach and the walking wheel gives you some idea of how cheerful and and cozy it is in here. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. I understand the marketing background now because everything is very visually appealing and your shop is beautiful. Oh, thanks. Yeah, which we'll show some footage of upstairs after we finish our chat, but yeah. So, um, so you've been plan you've been in business, what, two years or three years? Um, I launched, there's always this Prince Edward Island connection. Every time yeah. I talk about my company, like yeah. I launched um, my sisters, I don't have um, blood sisters, but I have some really close friends that are sisters. So we went to Charlottetown to launch it in the year of the sheep. Ah, that, okay. that day. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that was 2014. Okay. But I still had my, my marketing agency then. Right. So I was just doing it part time. Uh, so uh, to answer your question, uh, I opened the shop three summers ago. Right. So Here, yeah. Around so the same time we Same as us. That's yes, me. that's right. Yeah. yeah, it's around the same time. Before that, I do little pop-up shops here and here yeah. and there. And I have my little fiber hut in my backyard in, in Dartmouth. That's, oh, okay. yeah. yeah. So we met because you buy beautiful fleeces, and then I get to prepare them, some of them. You have, you have lots more that I don't do, but um, some of the preparation, the fleeces are being prepared for teaching spinning and that kind of thing in our mill so that's how you and i met <laughs> well as soon as you have fiber in common right it's yeah. just like oh yeah. Yeah. it doesn't matter it opens yeah. the heart it does yes yes it's true yeah so um and then you uh so then you've you have the, your shop open and you're doing workshops and everything and then you come up with an idea for uh a week of festive fibery goodness so it, it's wool stock is coming yes. up and it actually starts the day that this will be launched which is oh, okay. the, yeah the 17th of uh, August 17th yeah but you still have lots of time to get here buy your plane tickets yeah indeed get yeah. your boat passage <laughs> do, what you, do what you have to so yeah. why don't you tell yeah. us about your sure uh, what your show. and it starts on the on the 17th so um so of course wool stock is based on Woodstock, which is where the name came from. So Woodstock was three days of peace and music. Mm -hmm. And Woolstock is eight days of fleece and sisterhood. Oh. So we start on Saturday the 17th, and we have seven days of workshops. So we have 20 workshops in seven wow. days. Wow. wow, that's so great. It is. Yeah. Um, and um, there's things like, so we have a, a book signing here on Saturday. We're doing a... Um, We'll get the nature loom out so people will come and weave on the nature loom. There's um, a community art project where you come and make a pom-pom and we're going to make a sheep. 
oh. that goes on for several days. So there's lots going on. There's a Knit with the Sheep at Lismore Sheep Farm. Oh, okay. There's a, a knock your, Knit Your Socks Off competition at Taddy Yarn & Company. You know, the local chocolate company, um, local chocolatier is having chocolate tasting. So there'll be, there's lots going on all week long, even if you're not in a workshop. Um, and the Lavender Farm is having an ice cream, lavender ice cream show. Yeah, so that's then. lovely. We need a chocolatier. You do? And, and, a, and a lavender farm. And a lavender farm. <laughs> Or you could just move to Tatamagoshi. Yeah, and there's a pizza place in River John. I was like, how do they have a pizza place? There's a they really good one in Tatamagoshi. Yeah. Okay. So the eighth day is the big one, and that's where you need to, you know, fly, swim, whatever you have to do to get here. Mm -hmm. So the eighth day, we're having um, a fiber village and market at mm -hmm. the rec center, which is our local rink. So that's how yep. that's how big it is. Oh, so we've great. got 40 vendors. Wow. We have a fleece show and sale. We have a children's activity area, we have demonstrations, we have food trucks, barbecue. So it's a big, it's, it's, a, big, it's a big hurrah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, lovely. If I can make it happen, there will be music, Woolstock music piped in, but uh, right. Woodstock music, but I, I, I'm still working on that. No. <laughs> right. so That's not high up on the to-do to list, and I've got a long to-do list at yeah. this point. Yeah. Oh, it's great. Yeah. That oh, sounds great. neat. So is this the first year for this? It's the second year. Second year, year. okay. So last, last year I actually launched um, the Truro Fiber Frolic, the Coal Harbor Fiber Frolic with, in conjunction with the Coal Harbor Heritage Farm Museum and then Woolstock. Um, so last year was much smaller, uh, but, but these, I realized these, not only did people really enjoy them, but the vendors, this was a way to marry the vendors yes. to help them um, increase their market and get people to know about right. them. So it, it just was a win-win for, for everybody. Yeah. So And for the people that got to see all that great fiber and experience. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And, and so one of my, one of my um, big goals is to uh, let people, encourage people, spinners and weavers and, and knitters, to think about where their yarn comes from mm -hmm. and to look at the fleeces and right. um, to think about spinning with fleece. Because the like the fleeces that I don't bring to you guys, I wash myself. Right. And I I love love doing that. Right. Love washing fleeces we, and carding yeah. them and playing with them. We don't sell a lot of fleeces in from our shop, but we do have people coming in and asking for them. And the ones that are really um, passionate about the process and everything don't want you to touch them. They yeah. want to be experience the whole thing like directly yeah. from the sheep. And we always say, Oh, we can are you sure? <laughs> they said, no, no, I'm going to clean it all myself yeah. and everything because that's all part of the, of yeah. the experience, isn't it? It's like you got to get your hands in the grease once in your life. Yes. And so, well, some yeah. people really like it. Not everyone. Like no. I have a, a spinning book there called Yarn and Texture. Um, and she's never washed a fleece in her life and she's an expert spinner. So I'm not saying that you, you right. have to. And I, I have people that come here and like they love to buy curly locks as long as I have them washed and ready. Yeah. And that's what they want to spin with. Yeah. And, and so more and more people are looking for, yeah, raw fleeces or even washed fleeces, but not um, what I call, uh, and I sell this fiber, so I'm not saying it in a negative way, but what I call is the cake mix fibers. Yes. So yeah. they're dyed, they're, they're processed, they're all ready to go and right. you can spin yeah. away. Right. I love spinning that sometimes too, but you know, my love is the, is the curly locks yeah. and making my fun and funky right. yarn. Yeah, yeah. Right. and you have so many fun and funky things upstairs in your shop. So cute. Like mm. colorful, yeah, beautiful, cheerful stuff. Yeah. 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 And you and I were having a conversation last week about um, the appreciation for different types of fleeces and what they do and the different um, different effects and everything that you can get in your yarn or your mm. weaving or just, or just experiencing the personality of different different fleeces there's so many different types right yeah and you know so I, I liken it sometimes to food right so there's all different flavors and there's all you know if you really like um steak doesn't mean that you have to eat steak every every day yes that's right. so it's the same thing as with your with your spinning or your knitting or however whatever you whatever you do right it's nice to try all different Types, all, yes. different, mm -hmm. all yes. different textures, and you know they all have different crimps and different mm -hmm. different handle, and mm -hmm. yeah. I think because we're shepherds too, like I love, I you feel, always feel you can feel the soul of the sheep in the oh. in the fiber, you yeah. know, like we and we get to know some of the ones that we spin every year because we're like, oh. like Iris from Blomet and Firm is pretty. Uh, famous. She's a real pig pen. Yeah. You know, there's always oh, lots, really? of, lots of vegetation. She, she likes her, she likes her good meal. Yeah. You know, but uh, she has the most beautiful natural black fleece. Yeah. 
And if yeah. Toby, her mom, is watching this, she's beaming with pride right now. But yeah. you know, we, we've never met Iris in person, but we feel well, like we know her. Yes. Yeah. And, and we Gord, certainly and understand Ramsey. her manners. Yeah. Gordon, Gordon Ramsay, famous one famous in Ram. Yeah. 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 <laughs> He's, he's, his, fleece is, his fleece is delightful. You know, you just think, you know, this Gordon, he's a cool cat. You can tell he's like super chill. <laughs> yep. Well, that's, yeah. see, now one of my favorite sheep is called Annabelle. Okay. And she's a Cotswold that lives yeah. over in Malagash, oh, which yeah. is on the other yeah. side of Tatum and Gush Bay. Yeah. And I just, I just love Annabelle's fleece. And I, and you can tell when people come in the shop when I've spun it and I put Annabelle's name on yeah. a label and they go, oh. Yeah, you know, they love it. Yeah. And Mo is another, um, mm -hmm. another. I'm kind of partial to the Cotswolds. Mo yeah. is a Cotswold that, from Bridgewater. That Jackie Wilde is the shepherd, and I just I love Mo. Yeah. So yeah, yeah you get a feeling. From and that's yeah. that's yeah. Some of us just yeah want that want that connection. Right. Yeah, it is. It it is a it's a different connection to what you're producing. So mm -hmm. even if it's not for everybody, you should try it like once. The fleece show and sale. We have a fleece show and sale at Woolstock. So even if you're not going to buy a fleece, you could come yes. and see them and yes. talk to the shepherds. Yes. And um, uh, yeah, just talk to them about the sheep and just see what they're like. And because a lot of people, their experience has been with meat sheep. Right. Mm -hmm. That's been their experience. I talked to spinners. Like, oh yeah, I've tried that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but it's because they've been given. Uh, a, a fleece that's full of vegetable yes. matter, mm -hmm. yeah. um, and there's just no way it's ever oh, going to get clean. Yeah, you've sent us some magnificent ones. Yeah, yeah and the natural colors, and the, you're right, like the curls and the crimp, and it's so exciting. Yeah, yeah. and they're all different. So yeah, they're, it's just uh, it's really a whole world, other world there. Yeah, it's and it's kind of it's kind of unfortunate for us in the situation we are because we're. We're mainly trying to do a hand knitter's yarn, so consistency is what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. But we, the one thing that makes it a little bit different is that we have to get that consistency using inconsistent fleeces that we get because we don't oh. buy graded fleeces. So we're mixing things to make a consistent product, but we start out with things that are very different. The fleeces are very different, whereas what you're um, really promoting I guess is to experience the like the breed specific uh, or blends of certain fleece types and so forth and that's it's a little bit more um, getting down to the real personalities of each of the types of fiber and, and highlighting those personalities yes, right exactly. that's what we, that's what we want to do is, is highlight those and make the most of those yeah. and so for for hand spun um, because you have to charge a lot more for hand spun than what came mm -hmm. from a mill. So it doesn't make sense to me to spin it to look like it came from the mill. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. And, and, but I also do, like if it's a Cotswold or a, a Romney that has a lot of curl and, um, and bounce to it, I don't, I, it would be like having curly hair and, and straightening. Yes. Mm -hmm. so it yeah. just, you know, why, yeah. why would you do that? You want to make the most yeah. of your beautiful... Yeah curly hair right. or if it is straight like if it's alpaca or something like that then you you know you play to that yes but um yeah i do like to i, I do like to to highlight what's best about right about that piece. and i think that um what a lot of people don't realize because you mentioned uh cotswold and is the the micron whole micron count thing and the fineness of the wool and but when you're starting to deal with all those different types of wool and fleece you understand that Cotswold is not known to be a fine micron wool. It's a long wool, a traditional mm -hmm. old style wool, but you can have beautiful, beautiful yarns or fibers coming from it just because of the length. It doesn't need to be 15 microns. It's, no, and it, it can, can still be, be like skin. soft and yeah. s smooth to the skin. And I think um, when we interviewed um, Janet Ogilvie at Green Gable Alpaca, she gave a very good explanation about comfort factor versus just, um, you know, micron count and whatever. And okay. it's the consistency of the fiber that makes it, can make it soft. So even a uh, fiber that's not as, um, you know, small, such a small number of microns can still feel very soft and comfortable as long as it's consistent. And I think yes. that that's what... Um, Something that you miss when you just buy uh, like a commercial blended yarn is that those kind of um, intricacies of the different textures and so forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would I would agree a hundred percent. Yeah. So, what are the types of vendors that are at the big shindig on the eighth day? Like, is it is what's sort of the variety of products that'll be available? There's a couple of um, 
there's a couple of shepherds that will be selling their um, their rovings and their raw fleeces, okay. as well as having raw fleeces in the fleece show and sale. Mm -hmm. We have um, uh, needle felting artists. Okay. We have Nuno felting mm -hmm. artists. We have um, a couple of people who sell rug hooking supplies. Oh, nice. Deanne Fitzpatrick. Will oh, be there. Everyone knows that. Yeah, Liz Moore Sheep Farm will be there. Yeah, and they make the needles too. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. They make, yeah, they make the River John needles. Yeah. Right. So um, they'll be there. Um, who else? We've got um, we've got lots of fiber vendors, but we also have so there's this little place between here and Truro that's called Earl Town, and Earl Town is this this great little. Um, hippie vibe going on but but in, they're in their 20s and 30s right oh. and so they're coming as a group and they make um mead they make uh, oh like, delicious yeah, yeah like or yeah. Uh, these special popsicles that they make they do uh foraged goods they do um fruit leather but you know all dehydrated right. all natural right, all right. Again. Okay. anyway so there's all that funky thing going on sort of like at, at Woodstock they had a little right. you yeah. know it was, yeah. it was billed as a, a, yeah. a music and arts festival right. so right. we've we've got that and their stuff's delicious I usually go there on Fridays and spin and yeah, yeah. I was just oh, okay. I was just uh, trying to make the point like it's not just yarn and there's like a whole variety of no, things that'll be available there is there is and I didn't even mention yarn but there is yarn but it's all indie dyers so right. I think there's three different indie dyers that are that um that have booths of course Sisterhood Fibers is there. Supplies, maybe your notions or anything along those lines? Yes, there's okay. um, there's um, this this new woman, it's called Hook, Line, and Tinker, and she does embroidery kit, kits. Oh, and oh neat. New oh, and, okay. New and funky embroidery kits. Ah, oh, right. neat. Yeah, makes there's something that makes project bags and, of course, candles okay, and good. soap. Oh, yeah, okay. Just all those, yes, all those things. Sounds all, like all a lovely things. market. Yeah, yeah, yeah really great. nice. Yeah, I think yeah. it's going to be... It's gonna be a Forty lot of vendors fun. is a good chunk. That's like, yeah. 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 I'm gonna have to try and stay in my booth, or I won't right. make any money that yeah. day. <laughs> <That's laughs> so I know I'll be bringing home lots of fleeces. So yeah. Right. Oh, good. Never get a chance and to look around yourself at those shows. We were uh, talking earlier too about um, you were you were having a little bit of trouble for getting enough fleeces for the market, or you wanted to encourage people to. Yeah. There's lots of people that have sheep around in the different provinces like quite quite a lot and um, we're sure that we're not getting the the amount of fleece that's potentially great for spinning or weaving or knitting or whatever and that we don't know what what people are doing with them because we know that they're sheep here but yeah we're not we're not seeing the fleeces so if you yeah so I you know obviously I, I definitely want to put a call out to people and I but since I've talked to you, I've talked to um, a couple of shepherds, and what I'm hearing is, and this may not be across the board, but mm -hmm. what I'm hearing is, well, we're really not sure how to grade our fleeces right. or, or how to prepare them for a fleece show and sale, mm -hmm. and because we don't have fleece show and sales here mm -hmm. too much, I right. think um, I think the Purebred Association of Nova Scotia does, um, but it's not a common thing for the right. small yeah. shepherd to be a part of. So I think they're a little intimidated by it, mm -hmm. um, and I think. Because this is the first time it's really gone public, mm -hmm. in a way, um, and I think we're going to see that on the flip side is that people don't know how to buy a fleece. Either. Right. So, right. so we do have Lee Langstaff, who's the president of the Maryland Sheep Association, is coming in to do a workshop on how to buy a fleece. Right. Oh wow! And we're encouraging great. shepherds to come into the, to come to that. So she's going to talk to them about what people are looking for, how to prepare your fleece, and she's a, she's a shepherd, and she has absolutely beautiful fleeces. Mm -hmm. You've processed yes. some of them. Yes. Ah, um, yeah. So um, she very, very kindly is coming in at her expense to, to do this, because she really oh, wants wow. to help us grow the wow, industry. Wow, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Like, yeah. What that's opportunity. a big opportunity yeah. for people. Yeah, yeah. it really, Gosh, it that's really great. is. Yeah. And I yeah. think that uh, it's a little bit, uh, maybe not surprising, because it's all the same as, most people that you talk to, if you ask anybody, you know, at what level are you a knitter, they say, oh, I'm not a very good knitter, even though they're a beautiful knitter. And I think that shepherds, um, unless they're really immersed in the fiber business, yeah. are kind of modest that and humble that same way. Well, I don't know if it's really good enough or, you know. Yeah, so I, I think you're right. There is a little bit of intimidation factor. So it would be great if people could come and, and uh, if they speak... Uh, to people at your uh, wool stock, they'll understand that it's it's not really rocket science. Like no. you, it's easy 
to make a few changes and have great fleeces uh, if you've got like basics the basics down with your with your sheep I think so yeah and, and I'm not a shepherd so I'm not going to pretend that I you know can tell people what to do or know it all but but what but I think even if you don't get your fleece in this year just come and Lee will be there she's a judge and it's yeah. not just Lee Delia Burge is there from Picto Jackie yeah. Wall will be there from Bridgewater so um, there'll be shepherds there that have been around for a long time and, and are also fiber artisans mm -hmm. and they raise they, they have fiber flocks so and they are it's it, it truly is a, a sisterhood and right. we're happy to talk all all we want to do is grow the industry right and, and make it better for everyone yes. and Delia yeah. is a wealth of knowledge too yeah oh, so yeah. you've got some yeah. really good uh, knowledge base coming yeah. so that's a great opportunity yeah. oh yeah, yeah they're all on board and they yeah we Lovely. all want to make this happen yeah. and See? the community is such that there's no need to be shy or intimidated because people that are interested in fiber love to talk about fiber all day long yeah like we yeah. You know, I mean, we always we always start with a saying, okay, we're just gonna do like a ten minute segment, yeah. and we yeah we're it, yeah we're a bunch of junkies. Yeah, <laughs> just <laughs> grab <laughs> grab some of that out of that basket there. Yeah, like this is incredible. If it, well, is it? It's all solid. Famous, no, like, no, and I've got Fabrizio. No, you can pull yeah. it apart. I've got Fabrizio over there. Oh, I've got okay. a new Fabrizio. Remember oh. Fabrizio? <laughs> no, I from remember. England. Oh, oh yes. the nine inch yes. Yes. I like, bought his shearing. I bought him again this oh, year. So who's okay. this? Look at this. This is amazing. This one. I don't know the name of this guy. Um, it, it came to me. It's been washed, and it was sitting around, I think, for a few years. So it's a bit matted. Right. But. It's beautiful. But the color yeah. and the length and yeah. the pearl yeah. is just incredible. So, it's got a whole basket full of it. Yeah, yeah. and I've basket. already spun quite a bit of it. Oh, wow. It. So I, it's, it's, um, it, can pull, it can pull apart. So yeah. I'll pull apart, and I'll just spin it exactly like this. And I, I think I have some upstairs that I've spun. I don't think I have any down here. But it'll just be big, luscious yeah. curls. Yeah, yeah, big, luscious yeah. curls. So it's, so it's gorgeous. Yeah. 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 And sometimes you have, um, you know, you take your your fleece out of a bag or whatever and you look at it like we had this situation where you sent me one uh last spring and i called you and said i don't think you really want me <laughs> no i'm so <laughs> glad you did that yeah. Yeah. because i was just like this is so beautiful it was these beautiful luscious silky yeah white we'll just curls. throw it in the carter and yeah <laughs> and i was like and destroy I, that yeah so what I, was I thinking? Yeah, I don't yeah. think you... Well, and it, once it was washed, it really became obvious, like, what the potential was. So oh. I, I, when I called you and said, yeah, I don't, I'm not going to do that. So, <laughs> But, isn't that, but there, that's a good example of what we were just talking about. Right. Like, I didn't have the experience that you do, um, you know, so I just, you know, took it there. And you said, well, you know what? You should do it this way. And I'm like, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, and so, and I didn't feel... Um, uh, intimidated or no, bad or anything no, it's just no. like we're all on a learning curve yeah, here we're yeah. all on a lot well, we, we had no idea like we would have people come in and they're like do you have raw fleece and and for the first year we were kind of like whoa i got an old bag of something yeah. back there you know <laughs> from our ram well what kind of ram is it yeah like, well he's like border less start going well can i see it yeah you know when you go <laughs> drag this old bag out and you're like what were we going to do with this we have no idea and they're like oh my god you know, they're like can i buy it all like okay yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so then you you know that gives you confidence you know well they seem to like it so yeah. what do yeah. we know you yeah. know it's, it's yeah. great yeah yeah and and when you go like you know I, I go to, I've gone to a few sheep and wool festivals and other places which is you know what inspired Woolstock because I'm like Maryland and New Hampshire and and, and uh, Maine and I want this at home. Yeah, yeah I want this at indeed. Home. Why shouldn't we? I, yeah. We, yeah, we should. But yeah. but it you know it takes a it takes a sisterhood. You know, they say it takes a village, but yeah. it takes a sisterhood yeah. to make this happen. Yes. Yeah, everybody yeah. collaborating. Together. Yeah, yeah, and they are like you yeah. know you guys are here and yeah. everybody I everybody I reached out to the shepherds and I'm new in this industry and you know mm -hmm. they could you know sort of poo poo but they don't. No, yeah, um, they're everybody's they're welcoming. everybody's very very welcoming and yeah. and uh, have I ever I'm just gonna you know switch the conversation here for a minute. But you know, this industry is, it's its all about women. And when I call, named my company Sister Fibers, I didn't realize that the mills, like most of the shepherds are women. Most mm -hmm. of the mills are owned by women. Mm -hmm. You know, the yarn shops and the fiber industry is, is owned by its women. Yeah. So this is a very female-centric yes. industry. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Certainly at the shop owner level. Like but there's even lots at the of mills in the shop. Yeah, too. male knitters. Well, more, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's Seems true. To be, there's it's, husbands and wives and a lot of actual sisters working together in the business. Yes. Like people are so shocked that we work together. There yes. are so many sisters working together in this business. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind yeah. of interesting. Well, I think, you know, it's very positive and so it's a little bit easier to get along in such a positive industry and we just all love sheep and fiber and so it's a really a shared oh, I passion it. yeah i absolutely love it a woman dropped in here today who uh well she's from nova scotia but she follows me she's, look i just i can't stop like, yeah but <laughs> she follows me on um on facebook and you know she gets out of the car and it's just like hi there can yeah. i give you a hug yeah and, you know, yeah just like oh yeah just yeah, yeah. well you guys must get that too it's, it's just yeah. it's a great it's a great sisterhood. Yes. Yeah, they're just, yeah. it's just wonderful. Yeah. Yes, well, I was never so shocked as when I went to the Toronto Knitters Frolic and somebody brought us each a banana bread. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rosanna from Italy. Hello, Rosanna, if you're watching. Yes. I still remember the banana bread. <laughs> Would you like my address, Rosanna? Because I love banana bread. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought, my goodness, that's awfully nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's lovely. And even you know, Lee that I was mentioning from Maryland, I met her at the coffee shop in Tanamagush when she was here on vacation, oh, wow. and we just struck up a wow, conversation. That's really and all of a sudden, yeah. well, the next spring I'm at the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival, and now she's coming here. Yeah, and oh, it's great. yeah, it's yeah. that sisterhood. As the soon as you talk to someone, it's the network that starts yeah. to build, and it's yeah. and it's uh, you know, for the most part, it's such a collaborative. It's a collaboration as well, which it is absolutely great. is. And it's, even though it's um, you know we've talked about it before, where people are surprised how the close relationships that we have with you know other mills or other stores that would be considered in another industry a comp- competition, but it's not. It's for the most part, it's not like that in this. Nope. Not in our part of the world, anyway. I don't know yeah, what it's like no. anywhere else, but we we all are working together for the one goal, which is the important goal of getting people to to work with fiber and to be passionate about fiber and to understand the benefits of working and making and creating and and uh, all of those positive things that enrich your your life yeah Yeah. and buying um like one of my goals um in sisterhood fibers is is i see myself as the link between the shepherd and the person who Right. Uses the fiber. Right. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm thinking about all the time. Yeah. Um, and local, I, what, um, I like local. I prefer local, but it, to me, as long as it's shepherd sourced, I really right. doesn't matter to me where the shepherd is. Right. As yeah. long as it's shepherd sourced, and we, mm-hmm. you know, and we know the name of the sheep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's right. Good. Look good. at that. Look how lovely that is. Good yeah. job. You're gonna go upstairs and spin that. I will. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is there anything else that you want to say before we go? About uh, just about wool stock that they need to know where it is. Tatamagush. Wool stock. Yeah. It's in. It's in. In and around Tatamagush. Some of our workshops are at with our at our friends Lismore Sheep Farm down the road. Um, there's lots going on. So whether you're in a workshop um, or not, drop up to Tatamagush. Um, uh, the Fiber Village and Market are going to be are going to be amazing. Right, going to be right. lots of fun. Right. So if you see this. Um, come up to me at the market and let and let me know. Yeah, yeah. I'll try and wear the same and outfit. We're, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're about thirty five minutes from the Prince Edward Island ferry terminal. How far yeah. are we from Halifax? Um, just under two hours. Under two hours. And we're okay. just under two hours from Moncton. Okay. And um, about two and a half but from it's a Charlotte. Beautiful, Town, relaxing so nice. country drive. Right. Yeah. Oh, it, yeah. Along, uh, along no the worries. coast. To, yeah, it's, beautiful. it's gorgeous. And yeah. there's actually a lot of things that you could stop in and see if you had some extra time too. Well, there's the lavender farm. Yeah. yeah. There's Sarah Bonnyman Pottery, who's been around for you know forty five years. She's, right. a, she's yeah. amazing. There's our Appleton chocolates, Tata Brew, Yost wine. Right. Yeah. We, like, it's just yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's all here. A rich area. Yeah, rich with culture. Yeah, yeah. great. Okay, great. Thank you, right. thank you, so Faye. So glad you came to town. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to see your yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.
interview with Faith. Yes, we had such a nice time. And we yeah. always, you know, it's always hard to leave the farm and organize something like that. Her place is so worth going to see. Yeah. Um, as you noticed from the footage I showed of all the cute little things she has. She, her sheep collection is something else. Like yeah. the sheep knickknacks and the sheep stuff. She's really got quite a collection. She has a beautiful eye for things. Yes. Um, her aesthetic. Is, she's yeah. Got really she's nice a sweet aesthetic. soul. And uh, if, you're, if you're passing through... Nova Scotia, it's definitely worth taking a run in right. there just to see and, what she's got. Yeah, and um, Tata Magush actually has a lot, a lot of, for a place that people might not have heard of, they've got a really nice um, yarn shop, which we didn't get to go visit, mm -hmm. but we've heard from our own customers that yeah. it's a wonderful, and Faith talk, talked about it. And um, she talked about some of the other things that are happening, like the some of those, uh, a lot of those vendors that are coming to Woolstock are all in the local area and have things going on at their own places yeah. that you can visit yeah. when you're when it's you're there. It's a beautiful oceanside um, village, yeah. and it's always been popular for cottages and things like yeah. that, and it's yeah. just stunning. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they they've got a lot going on. It's yeah. very culturally rich, like yes. I said in the interview. So yes. um, it's worth checking out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks, uh, Faith, and we really hope your event is a smashing success. Yeah. Eight days. Oh, that's a, yeah. that's a lot that's of work. That's an undertaking. Those yeah. events are so much work. Yeah. So good for her for doing yeah. it. That's really good. And yeah. it's really, um, it's really important what work what she's doing is for people to appreciate the um, you know the differences in the in the fibers and yarns and yeah. like everything it's and a, if you do a, go after seeing this definitely seek her out and let her know that you saw her on here she'll be yeah. so appreciative just to kind of yeah. find out where the people are coming yeah. from yeah yeah great so um, I put <laughs> I put on your next ball winding because you wanted to talk about the the ball winding incident I wasn't even there I know but yeah, apparently there was an incident yes. with a ball winder. <laughs> Kim got a new heavy-duty ball winder and was like super excited to try it out. Yes, which we sell in the store. Do you feel the pictures will speak for themselves? Well, it's really, it's hard to explain because we're in... It sound like a very fun knit night. Uh, this is when I was yes, in Halifax. Yes, Jennifer was in Halifax and um, I was balling up a skein of yarn and I had the new ball winder and I thought well I'll just try it but I didn't want to be bothered putting the swift up probably that was probably my first mistake this is where things go awry yeah. so I was trying to do it on my on my legs oh it was the it, we were balling the skein I offered to ball the skein for Margaret from Edinburgh who would knit the right. beautiful sweater so it was a 380 right. yard skein of yarn and she's like no no Margaret was so sweet. She said, I'll just do it. I'll, I've do, I balled thousands of balls of yarn. I'll just do it by hand. I said, no, no. I have my new ball winder. I'm going to do it. Well, be the it hero. ended up, there's pictures. So <laughs> you'll see the pictures. It started at one end of the shop. There were three of us. And by the time the ball got wound, we were at all the way over at the other end of the shop. There were... Uh, you know, but you see, you'll see the big macrame moments. There was <laughs> Things a little bit of swearing wind around the bottom of the ball winder. Yes, I imagine. yes. And, and Margaret yeah. kept saying, "I would have just balled it myself." <laughs> <laughs> and she's thinking, "Thanks for your help." Yes. And as you know, I never give up. Yeah, it can be a flaw. Yes. So there was no way <laughs> that Margaret thing was, was going that. off the baller, and that was that. <laughs> yes. Trust me. And all of that, the next day, I still didn't give up because I was like, there's got to be, I'm, there's something wrong with this ball winder. <laughs> I don't know what it is. So, you know, operator error, I didn't have the guide, the, the little guy, curly Q, that guides the yarn to go onto the ball properly, snapped into place. And if I had just read the instructions, ah. I would have known that they have collapsed that. When they put oh. it in the box, and you actually have oh, to... Oh, I can see how that would cause a problem. Yes. So I put it up, because I knew it wasn't okay. supposed to be flat, but there's actually like a place where you have to snap it into place. Yeah. A strategic angle that right. it has to go on. That makes a lot of so sense. So the next day, after making a complete fool of myself, I figured it out, and my ball just wound up just like <laughs> <laughs> Margaret missed an evening of knitting. Yeah. Which for a knitter like hers is a lot of knitting. She well she made up for lost time. She was super fast. I bet. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so that was <laughs> after the ball she I after your help. Yes. This is very fast. And I don't know how many hundreds of balls I've wound, but so again, 
All it takes is a little bit of courage. <laughs> right? We don't do everything we perfectly. We live to ball again. Yes, we live to right. ball again. So now I'm going to just do a quick little thing about beating okay. something I learned. Because this reminded me. So Andrea, Fruity Knitting, did a lovely video about how to put beads on a finer yarn. And I'm all about the Swarovski bicone. And those things have really tiny holes. I mean, yeah. to put them on yarn is no small feat. It did work with this, and I used the Andrea method, which is basically um, putting it on a regular thread and needle and then siphoning it down on, because you can't fit a needle through the yes. hole, like a darning needle or anything yeah. like that. So if you want to check that out, it's on Fruity Knitting. Yeah. However, I did a really sneaky thing way back in, gosh, this was back about Christmas time when I did this Hosty shawl. Yeah. Um, which we've seen several times now. And this is a really thick yarn. This is a worsted weight yarn, and I wanted Swarovski bicones on it. I was not prepared to give up. Well, there yeah. is no way in heck it was going through as a single strand, a double strand, putting a crochet hook on, like the pattern direction set. Yeah. No, ha not happening. Yeah. So what I did, it took me about three days to figure out how I was going to do it. And uh, I was really determined not to just sew them on because right. that seemed very unknitterly. Yes. And I, and I just didn't want to have all kinds of little knots and things at the back. Fiddly. And it just, yeah. I'm like, you know, Edison invented the light bulb. Surely I can figure out a way to get these bike cones on. Ended up being something very simple, but I'm just going to tell you so that you too can have Swarovskis on every project if you're tempted to. <laughs> I actually took a, pe a, a nylon thread that yeah. was brown. I just introduced it as you would if you were doing color work or intarsia right. or whatever. And I put the Swarovskis on that. And then I just double stranded that yeah. row so I knit along and the you they just were held the two strands I together. held the two strands together right. and want the very fine strand I don't know if you'll be able to see this had the bead on it and yeah. the yarn doesn't have it on but no. this is actually nylon thread like yeah. 100% uh, very strong like upholstery thread yeah um, and it fit through with a regular sewing needle or I might have even fed them through by hand I don't yeah. know and then I just put on how many I needed and I carried it along with double stranded and when I knit the two together the bead was on the light one and yeah. not on the yarn and, and you, you, you never can't know see it. No, uh, in a million years and I was so excited not, yeah yeah so that's something you can do if you want that to is a really nice project isn't it's it? really nice and this, this designer Susanna I see as she's known on Ravelry has some stunning shawls yeah like after I went back and I just I couldn't I wanted to make so many and I, I just I, I couldn't but someday I'm gonna go back to something of hers because yeah. and I know Janet uh, showed hers from Green Gable yeah. Alpaca it, and I didn't have quite enough yarn to knit it the width um, that the pattern is supposed to be for. wider. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm probably missing a couple inches here. Oh, okay. But yeah, so it was a really fine I, lace you pattern. Know what I, you know what I like about it is that it's nice and long and, uh, even though you didn't, it's still not a very wide pattern, even if you know, I the think real... it's supposed to be another couple inches down yeah. at the widest. But part. what I like is that it's not pretending to be a full size shawl and it's puny but it it's is not. long enough so that it's functional yes it's long enough that it's functional and even though it's not fully wide when you wrap it around it's it's meant to be wrapped around your neck i'm sure yeah. and that's all that it's yeah. that's exactly the right yeah, size i to do, do it. i love it and it's a natural brown color and it's actually llama yeah i have to say it kind of bugs me a bit when you have um a pattern and the shawl is puny yeah, we don't we don't like do a triangle, this. a regular triangle shawl. Yeah, it's gonna be wearable. You have to wear it like a kerchief. Yeah, no, uh, we, we're not into that. No, we're not into that. So, we want to really wrap. Well, we need to be warm here. Yeah, <laughs> needs to actually be functional. So yeah. anyway, you might want to check out her Ravelry page, and uh, the yarn actually came from Longway Homestead. A yeah, part of the mini mill family out um, in Manitoba. Yeah, and uh, it's from her llama. So. Yeah. It's beautiful. Really cute. And I love it. Every still. time you bring it out, I think it's, I, I always remark Great. that it's a nice set. All right. So. Okay. So that's the beading technique. So yeah. now we have the shop update. Okay. Okay. Where to begin? Begin with the yarn. We'll try to go quickly. Okay. So uh, we've talked about before in the past that we can't always make flock fingering. Right. Which is a hundred percent. Somebody wrote to us and asked us if we would make a, a DK um, so this is not technically a DK. We call it a fingering. It could be called a heavy fingering. You might even stretch it and say it's a sport, but this is a hundred percent wool. Mm -hmm. And, um, we, we did, uh, are these, the, these are the two colors that you did in the regular colors, right? Yeah. So we have, um, first twilight light again. Yeah. First light and twilight. twilight. 
So you've seen these before because we put them up for you guys with a special link and we're just gonna do that again. Right. Um, so we have a little bit of this and a little bit of this relisted and I'll put the links if you wanna buy them below because right. we don't really stock it regularly now and you typically can't buy it online. Yeah. So they're both beautiful colors. It's 100% wool, three ply. Yeah. Um, 380 yards for yeah. 114 grams. And we, ha we have that. So when we make fingering, this is what we make. Yeah. So this is it. Yeah. And then because of the, uh, the way that I'm just loving the, the, sweat, the uh, birds of a feather shawl, we actually did petals in the same 100%, um, the 100% wool. Yeah. So it's about the same thickness uh, as what I'm knitting with. It might be a tiny little bit finer. And, but it is that color and that color is just luscious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really nice. So yeah. that's available. This is not usually available in uh, flock fingering. It's no. not one of the regular colors, no. but we think we'll see how it goes. Yeah. We might. And this you definitely only need two because it's 380 yes. yards yes. and the others were two. Yes, you need yeah. uh, 600 yards. Yeah. So two skeins is enough, uh, yeah. enough to do it. Yeah, sure. now I only made seven. Okay. So, but two or three people who yeah. didn't get a chance to make the project with the cashmere can make it in the same color, just in this right flock fingering. Yeah. So okay. that's an option for you. Yeah. So that's uh, that's on the yarn side. Then I don't know where. What do you want to talk about now? Oh, let's talk about the chiagu. Okay. <laughs> so we got the blue one. Yeah. <laughs> we we got the blue ones. So people know that we're a bit partial to the Chiago yeah. needles now, and uh, we're just knitting with them all the time because we love them. And we've showed uh, different sets before. So we have the shorty set in the fine um, needles. So yeah. uh, I, shoot, I forget what it, what it goes to. I think it's a 2.25 to a 3.25, or a 2 to a 3.25 in the red set. Yeah. And um, this is the same kind of idea, but it's the bigger sizes. Yeah. which we were missing. Often yeah, I wanted them. Yeah, so um, you this is what the set looks like, and you'll have to read the sizes because oh, I can't wow. read it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this one goes from three point five to five millimeter. Right. Which is a US. oh, and they're double right because there's two lengths of each tip yeah. size. So there's really teeny tiny. You're knitting with your fingertips. Yeah. And then there's, you have a little bit more yeah. bandwidth version. Three, three inches, two and inches so, and three inches. Yeah, so it goes from 3.5 millimeter to five millimeter, which is a US four to US eight. So if yeah. you're doing a sock and it's a thicker or whatever, yeah. then you can use these for this. And I have really wanted these at times for sleeves and things. Yeah. So it's really nice to have them. And of course they come with the short cables yeah. um, that go along with. Right. And I've ordered all the cables, uh, the, all the cables for all their needles. So they, they've got a great range of cables. Mm -hmm. And um, so you can, you know, with the cables that we have, uh, you can mix and match. And, yeah, it's a know. really flexible system. Yeah, it's yeah. really, really. But and this is kind of a missing piece for me. The joins are um, phenomenal. Yeah. And I think it's a five inch cable that you get in here and a six inch cable yeah, and, and an eight, eight. Inch, yeah. eight inch cable. And then the needles are two inches and three inches. So right. you do the math, you can figure out, yeah. you can go all the way. And I actually have um, cables in uh, longer that will fit. Yeah. fit it's these. all interchangeable as all long as you have the right size cable outlet. Yeah. Because they do have three different sizes of outlet. Yeah. They have a mini, a small, and a large. Right. Yeah. And they, but they have adapters as well. Yes. Yeah. So. It's, you can do amazing. anything. Anyway, it's yeah. amazing because you've got, it's got to be, the, I, you know, if you don't like magic loop, you got to have the right size loop. And sometimes yeah. it's a matter of an inch. Yes. So you would switch from the three inch tip to the two and then it's perfect. You yeah. know, as you decrease you can or use vice versa. one three inch one and one two yeah. inch one. I've yeah. done that it too. It just so. makes it so fast and easy. Yeah. Yeah. So, and the joins are impeccable. Yeah. Like I can't say They're that wonderful. Enough. And we also got in stock um, really fine needles with interchangeable cords which yeah. you can't find anywhere yeah. either so all the way down to us zero i think wow yeah yeah it's a great so, we love them yeah, yeah. they are a bit of an investment but totally worth it so yeah. quickly i just want to show we have two other styles listed of the stitch markers in the vintage tins now so right. you can go on our online store and check out um, one has opening and one has closing but i've right. added these two right and then on the stitch marker front, Coco Knits recently launched these split stitch markers. Yeah, we love Coco which, Knits. Oh gosh, Coco Knits. 
Um, and there's 60 of them in here and they're lovely little pastel colors. I love, they always do rainbow. So they're nylon coated steel. Um, I was reading about them and their product information. You can actually bend them slightly, like to oh. fit whatever you want. Um, and you know, whenever you would need, um, not so much an opening, but a, a movable stitch yeah. marker. These are a new addition because they've had the opened, the sort of right. safety pin style and the yeah. closed ring for a while. So right. these are new. Yeah. So we've got those in stock. Um, also from Coco Knits, we added the sweater workshop book, which mm -hmm. is a, just like, a, I don't know, it's a Bible. They always sell out really quickly. Um, it teaches you a method for knitting almost any style mm -hmm. of sweater and adapting it um, to your body, or you can adapt the style and design of it. Right. And uh, someday we really want to learn how to instruct sort of the class on this. But for yeah. now, we just have the, the actual sweater workshop book. So those right. are in store and listed online. But we didn't get a ton of them, and they do tend to sell quickly. Yeah. So if you had your eye on that, um, you can have a look at that. And then we got the Saltwater Mittens book, Relate to the Party. Yeah. We thought they were arriving <laughs> in June. But yeah. finally, I was like, where are our books? Yeah. Um, and they use brazen little yarns in here. Yeah. But the weights do correspond quite well to some of the yarns that we have as yeah. well. And in particular, our Selkirk Worsted works for a lot of the patterns. Yes. And if you haven't seen this book, I it's don't so know where sweet. you've been, but it's yeah. a, it's just adorable. Um, I don't, it's been really, really, really popular. There's all kinds of cute little historical stories in here, yeah. very traditional patterns, little fun things like shooting mitts with the trigger finger and yeah. all that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and the patterns, the color work patterns are just beautiful. So right. a couple of these went at knit night and some people already have projects yeah. um, started and are anxious to get into it. So Yeah, so it's really uh, the, the women that wrote the book were worried about patterns being lost, traditional mm -hmm. patterns of Newfoundland knitters that mm -hmm. were knitting uh, mittens. Um, and they had to be durable and functional yes. they're double knit yeah yeah mostly so uh it's just a treasure that, yeah. that book it's just and it's been highly successful yeah so anyway we have that listed online we right. got quite a few of these and they're in the store as yeah. well and then one other follow-up item so i also or we also now stock individual colors in the greener shades so we have only had the kits up to now we thought we'd give that a try and it's gone over gangbusters we've mm -hmm. sold so many dye kits like yeah. by the time this box came half of them were gone yeah. i'm gonna have to reorder again yeah. which i love because i think dyeing is a really fun thing right. to add to your repertoire if you're a knitter because back to the sweater reuse story if you have a white sweater you want to unravel now you can actually also change the color of the yarn right. if you wanted to so these will be listed individually online too or if you've bought the kit and you just want to refill these are half ounce jars and mm -hmm. what's in the kit are quarter ounce okay um but nonetheless they're available for individual sale now so if you used all your blue and you want more blue you can just get the blue right and finally <laughs> this is you can tell I'm trying to go fast because it's yeah. going to be really long. But we got Fleece and Harmony enamel pins. Yes. For your project bag. We've been wearing them around the store. Yeah. We're like so, we're so excited. Yeah. Uh, and it's just our logo, but they're really Ken, cute. Ken wears it. It's really funny. Yeah. He says, oh, he says, customers, them. do you work here? Yes, I do. <laughs> it's a badge of honor. Yeah. Yeah, so these, really these are really fun. So we've listed them because you have to have them. Everybody has them. So, yeah. uh, I mean, we can't go to Rhinebeck without our own enamel pins. Right. Right. Well, maybe so. we can. But, <laughs> uh, which I think we're thinking of going. Yeah. Yeah. We don't we're, know for sure. We're definitely going to be in New East, and we're thinking we're going to be at Rhinebeck this yeah. year. There's a little something in the works, a little road trip planning happening. Yeah. And I think we're probably going to make it. I think it's time for us to go back. Yeah. It's been three years since I had It'll the, be four. Four years yeah. since I had the proper Italian salami that you can't buy here. Yeah, that's right. Not that I'm all about the food. <laughs> I had no You're just like, mostly, mostly about the food. I only, all I did was eat. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. But right. now, now you'll, you there's, we'll be looking at it from a different, it was kind of a, no, a I'll research still mission. Be going with the food. <laughs> Not just the food though. Well, I hope to see some of our viewers there. Yeah. I mean, when you make yarn, you, you do get excited about yarn, but you're definitely coming at it from a different angle because yeah. we, we make our own, so yeah. it's a bit different. But but uh, yeah, that's the story where all I bought at Rhinebeck were some tampons and an I Love New York. Yeah. 
<laughs> and some coconut stitch markers. Yes. I didn't get those at Rhinebeck. I got them at the Mermaid's Pearl. Yeah. Uh, which is on our way by. But we had such a fun trip last time, and I really yeah. do hope that we get to go back. And yeah, if, uh, if we do, we'd love to see you It was amazing. All. To see, yeah. yeah, it was amazing to see the passion. It's just a it. beautiful area. Yeah. I really hope the weather was as nice as it was last yeah. time we went. So... Anyway, so these are up too. Yeah. So, so lots lot. happening. Lots happening in this shop. So right. before we forget, I have to talk about Cheryl Burnett's project that she's doing. And we talked a little bit about um, Cheryl Burnett in a previous episode because she really, um, when you talk about people that have really have a milestone in your mind about knitting, Cheryl's um, videos were a milestone for me when I was knitting because she is um, talks a lot about gauge. She has a, a class that you can buy a video. Um, well, there are a lot of the videos are free actually, but she uh, wrote a book called Sweater 101 and she's really um, a, a proponent of knit your gauge, figure out what your gauge is and then adapt your pattern to fit your gauge so that you're not trying to force yourself to knit at a gauge that you're not comfortable yeah. in. So it's and just, with the fabric you like. Yes. Like some people want something looser and more airy yes. and sometimes you don't. Yes. And the, you know, the designer doesn't necessarily have to decide that for you. Right. And I think that where what she unlocks is the fact that just like what Jennifer was saying earlier, <coughs> excuse me, is that you can, you can adapt things and still make that sweater pattern that you absolutely want to make with the yarn that you absolutely want to make and gauge is one of the ways to do that so um cheryl's doing a project and we're going to put a link to the project um, in the show notes where she's asking it's a survey about gauge and she wants as many knitters to participate as as um, she can get so that she can um, work on a project about demystifying gauge and how you work with gauge and when I was um, chatting with her on email she has 444 people that have filled out the survey but she'd like to have as big a sample mm -hmm. and she's got no no um, she's not trying to put any biases on what the answers are so you have to you answer honestly and you know the very first question I think is you how often do you do a gauge swatch Always. Be honest. Often. Never. And I think, I don't know if she says, I would have put, what's a gauge swatch? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I just, <laughs> at one point. Yeah. At one point. So I'm going to put the link for, to uh, to that survey and I'd encourage you to, to do yes, it. Yes, please help her out. It's It'll be so valuable for everybody yeah. in the knitting community to get the results. Yeah, and yeah. I don't know exactly what she's going to do with the information, but she's planning on something and really... She is just so um, um, generous in the way that she wants to help people knit. So she's like us. as like We just want people to knit and yeah. enjoy it and to enjoy what they're doing and like what they make. Yeah. And uh, so for, for me, she was one of the, the people that really unlocked that kind of courage um, as well. So And now I actually even like doing gauge. In fact, I spent knit nights just doing gauge swatches. I, I know. I, I did it. a massive one for my Ahaya. Yeah, I love it. And it's, really it's good to make it big because I, when I looked at it, even if I had been able to get gauge, I didn't love the fabric. It was a bit too loose for a cable sweater. Yeah. So it's important to know and I'll like my sweater so much better now yeah. that I have that information. And yeah. then of course I, I did another needle size and then ended up ripping it out because I wasn't going to get the, the schematic. But none of that took very much time. Right. Considering I'll have this sweater for the rest of my life yeah. and uh, the amount of enjoyment I'm going to get out of it. Yeah. So it is, it's a really worthy worthy cause. Right. Engaged swatches are definitely worth doing. Yeah. And we'll put uh, we'll put the link like we did before to the Sweater 101 videos uh, yeah. on her channel. She's got a YouTube uh, channel. and But if you can do the survey, that will really help her. Yes. Yeah. Help us. And help we Cheryl. Think, and we think it's important too because we want people to feel good about we don't want people to be filled with trepidation trepidation yeah. when they're you uh, gotta be fearless something. in the yarn shop yeah exactly <laughs> exactly just like <laughs> julia child was fearless in the kitchen yeah you can do it yeah and then that last well we're almost done so the <laughs> uh, ask us anything so kathleen there's no um l it is kathleen h uh, would want to know, would like to know if we would sell yarn bases to dye, in particular Elden Lace. So, 
Um, the answer to that, Kathy, right now is no, and I'll tell you why. Not just no, <laughs> I'm just saying no. Um, Alden Lace is one of our most popular yarns, and I'm doing everything I can just to keep up with the demand for our shop. So we're not at the point right now where I'm making enough that I would be able to sell it um, at, as a base for, for hand dyers. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, if you watch every episode, you know that we absolutely love knitting with it. We're getting great feedback, but I can't make enough. I can't make enough. If um, And I'm not helping. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everything and, in Elden Lace. Yes, exactly. So, and just to give you a little bit of perspective, I was telling a customer that this this morning, actually, is that when I knit uh, or when I spin for the Aran weight or the worsted weight yarns, it takes me about two hours or so to spin a batch. When I have to spin for Elden Lace or the sock yarn, it can be more than five and a half hours. Mm -hmm. So if you just think a little bit about the way production goes. And the economics a, of running a business. That's a yeah. big difference. So we just don't have the capacity right now. So yeah. um, if it turns out that we do have the capacity at some point, and I have to say there's a real concern about sourcing mohair as well. Yes. Right yeah. now, mohair is, uh, there's a, a bit of a... Uh, <laughs> An international a mohair crisis. Yes, yes. And in, in fact, commercially, it doesn't help us because we spin local fibers. Right. But commercially, it's almost easier to get cashmere right now yeah. than it is to get mohair. So we're so. lucky we do have a supplier in Ontario, which we're yeah. happy with, that it's Canadian and yeah. we understand how they look after their animals and all that kind of thing. But that's really all we can get. Yeah. At this point, because we're not prepared to go, uh, you know, buy it from someone we don't know. Yeah. And um, we do get quite a bit. But yeah, yeah it's, it's in scare, pretty scarce supply. Yeah. Hopefully that, that improves a little bit. And I know um, the person we get it from is hoping to grow their herd and so yeah. on. But that's yeah. Right. So that's the answer to that, and it's not because we want to hoard Elden no. Lace. It's just that we can't, <laughs> we can't even keep up with our own uh, yeah. shop's needs. Which do, do seem to be getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, because, well, it because is it's a, a really it's a nice great, yarn. It's a great yeah. yarn. Yeah. So then, um, and him and Lynn wanted to know how do you decide the number of plies and how do you make a three ply and do we have heritage recipes for dyeing? Mm. So the first thing is we use greener shade dyes. Yeah. And so we have used. It's organic certified. So I think you're probably thinking about natural dyeing. Yeah. Which would be plant based or yeah. cochineal or whatever. Right. Yeah. And then there would be recipes for that. Yeah. Ironically, there's actually a notation in a letter that was found in Ooh. our old house from 1874 where there was a, a recipe for cochineal, or she was asked the. the matron of the house was um, get, ordering her cosh needle for her yarn dyeing. But uh, in our case, we don't we don't have a heritage yeah. recipe. There's recipes, but yeah, it's Jennifer's. still like a powder that looks like, you know, there are, I, I don't know, it's not made of plants or natural yeah. things that I would forage for. It's just and like a typical a powder. powdered yeah. acid dye. However, the components that make it uh, strike on yeah. fiber are organic certified. Right, yeah. that's right. So then the next part of your question is how do you decide the number of plies? Well, the number of plies is actually, it's more like an architectural thing. The, the yarn is different depending on how many plies and the more plies you have, the rounder the strand of yarn is. So depending on what you want to do with the yarn, then you, that's how I decide the number of plies. So for something like lace, because it's usually laying flat, two plies is a single ply is fine, but I like a two ply. And two plies are not normally as good for cables as a three ply. So when I'm doing things that are for cabling in particular, like Aaron weight and so forth, I do three ply. However, like we said, our Selkirk worsted actually is a two ply, but it works really well mm -hmm. for cables as well. But that's because of the type of fiber that we have. Yeah. The Corydale blend is makes it really cushy. Yeah. Um, and then how do I make? A three ply, you asked? Well, in episode eight, the welcome to our world segment shows how I ply yarns. And then you were talking about in your question about how you couldn't get your head around three plies. You're, you can see how it is very easy. You just put three strands together instead of two strands together. It's not, you're, you're thinking too hard. 
because <laughs> because is she thinking about the idea of reversing the twist but you're really just twisting all three in the same direction yes exactly. yeah so you're it reversing the twist on the individual fly because i yes. can see how you'd be thinking well if they're like a dna strand how is that working oh, but that's yes. not okay. how it's done yes they're all not right. going in opposite like that right you're reversing the twist from how it was spun. Yes. And so they're all three are going around in the same direction. So it's right. not a matter of having an opposing pair. Okay. So I'm so immersed in that. I wouldn't have even thought of it that way. Yeah. But you're absolutely right. Yeah. That's why. Because she said it's very easy for me to think about how two ply would work. Yeah. But not a yeah. three ply. But they're all going in the same direction. But they're just going in the opposite direction of how it was spun. Right. Yeah. And you can see that because the segment on episode eight is spinning and plying. Yeah. So you'll be able to see that it's spun in one direction, the individual plies, and then they're twisted in the opposite direction all together. Yeah. And then we steam it. So you yeah. would kind of get the impression that somehow they're locked together. Yeah. And the opposing force of the spin twist versus right. the ply twist does do that to a degree. But yeah. then we also um, sort of like, I don't know, like you... you it's like how a curling iron works yeah. with heat. Like you really kind of lock in yeah. um, the way that they're twisted together using steam. Right. So, right. so they're not going to go anywhere, even though there's nothing, like they're not opposing each other. Like and they're that. not felted or they're yeah. not. Uh, Which I think is probably what, what she's yeah. thinking. Why three yeah. would be confusing. That's good. Well, I'm yeah. glad you're, you were here. You were <laughs> <laughs> no, to <laughs> clarify the question. Yeah. I was like, well, I'm not sure. I'm just so immersed in it that yeah. I, yeah. yeah so I'm sure I'm, that's, yeah. I hope that's good. If not, let us know. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. Yeah. Phew, I feel like I'm out of breath. Oh gosh, it's long. I hope no one's annoyed. It, the light has actually, like, it's almost dark now. Yeah, I know it's starting to yeah. get dark earlier. Yeah. I hope you can still see us. We've been rambling on here yeah. for I don't know how long. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, but, we'll say a quick goodbye. Yeah, and, we uh, have our, our Ravelry group yeah, that you, you can, can join, join and you can put projects there yeah don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yeah. and give a thumbs and up and we'd love a thumbs up and please if you wouldn't mind share us with your social media people a few people yeah. have put up pictures of them watching us and tag yeah. us which i just love it's so yeah. sweet now getting to see them in their yeah. knitting space yeah uh, they're watching us and we're watching them watch us or whatever yeah. but um it would really help us grow grow the podcast and have right you know more time for more fun yeah. so if you wouldn't mind doing that we'd really appreciate it yeah and we're here we're here and we've been we're meeting ready to people take, yeah, yeah we've been meeting people this morning we had having a great, our photos a great taken. Group. yeah we had yeah. a great a great group here this morning that came from Montreal that yeah. was uh watched watches yeah. well it's actually really one person watched it and I think she uh, dragged imposed, everybody yeah, else. she dragged everybody else but yeah. we had a really great conversation but we so appreciate fun. everyone coming out yeah. to meet yeah. us so, so thank all right. you all so, for everything yes yeah so uh until the next episode see we'll, you in two weeks yeah see you in two weeks okay, bye, bye.